Fluency is one of the most controversial words in the language learning sphere. One of the most common questions I get is about how long it took me to be fluent in English or French or Russian and all of the other languages I speak. Hi, my name is Luca from lucalamparello.com and today I'm going to talk about how long it takes to become fluent in a foreign language. First thing first, let me clarify what fluency actually means to me. Fluency is the linguistic ability combined with cultural awareness to smoothly and confidently interact with native speakers in a meaningful way. I talk more in depth about fluency in another video, so if you haven't watched it, definitely check it out. The link is in the description box below. Now, when we talk about fluency, we should clarify if we're talking about just speaking or other skills too. If fluency generally denotes the ability to do something smoothly, then we should also take into account the other skill areas of learning a language and ask ourselves, how long does it take to become a fluent listener or reader and writer too? So with that in mind, let's get started. The very first factor to take into account is the distance between your native and target languages. Have you ever said or heard people say, hey, language X is too difficult. It will take me forever to learn it. First of all, I dislike the words difficult or hard because they're often used to discourage people from taking a course of action. The truth is the words we use shape, define and direct our thoughts. So we need to choose them carefully. I very much prefer using the word complex instead of hard, for example. You see, a complex system is an entity that is made up of smaller and simpler parts. A human being is a complex organism. An airplane is a complex object and language is a complex linguistic entity. And if you see two languages as two distinct systems, the overall distance between the two languages can be defined as the sum of the distances between the individual parts of those two systems. For the sake of clarity and simplicity, let's suppose that one can define a language system according to three main components, vocabulary, phonetics, and syntax. Vocabulary is the collection of words that make up a language. Phonetics has to do with its fabric of sounds, and syntax is how single words are assembled to form sentences. Each part has specific features that are unique to each language, and features that might not exist in other languages. This, in general, adds and contributes to the amount of time and effort it takes to learn a language, and that is to the overall distance you need to cover to reach fluency. To me, the more distant a language is from my native one, the more time and effort it takes to reach fluency in it. To give you a very concrete example, Spanish is an extremely close language to Italian, my own native language. The vocabulary and syntax are very similar. The overall sound structures are too, with some differences in intonation. On the other side of the spectrum, Korean is as distant as it can get from Italian. Completely different vocabulary, a completely different way of forming sentences, not to mention pronouncing words. Japanese is also very distant from Italian, but slightly less so since it shares quite a lot of similar features in terms of pronunciation. But you get the idea. If the distance between your native language and your target language is an objective indicator of how much time it might take you to learn your target language, there is a group of other factors that can make this amount of time much shorter or much longer. I'll call this group of factors your personal background. And by personal background, I mean your life experience coupled with your language learning experience. For instance, if you're American and you have learned French and Spanish, learning Italian will come much easier to you than another American with no experience in second language acquisition. And having a more solid or less solid language background can have a major impact on another additional factor, your mindset. If you have already learned a language to fluency, then you know for certain that learning a language is something you can do, which is a very, very big deal. And you've probably already developed a learning method that suits you well. On top of that, you might not have the fearful attitude towards speaking that many first time learners have. All of these factors make a huge difference in the overall amount of time and effort you're going to put in your target language. And there is one more thing I wanted to talk to you about your life circumstances, or simply put, how you live. And mind you, I did not say where you live, but how. To give an example, I myself am Italian. I live in Italy, but I don't speak Italian that often given that I live and interact mostly with foreigners. When you see a person speaking a language fluently, you should not ask him if he ever lived abroad or which books he used to learn. Instead, ask the following, did you spend a lot of time with native speakers? Did you live with them? Did you go out and share experiences with them? 
Have you traveled to the country or countries where the language is spoken? Do you possibly use the language at work? His language decisions ultimately shaped his destiny, just as your language decisions will shape yours. Each person is unique and the amount of different scenarios is limitless, but let me illustrate this with a simple example. For simplicity's sake, let's take two extreme examples within the language acquisition world. Meet Juan, a mid-30s Spanish guy from Madrid. Juan already speaks several Romance languages fluently. However, he has never learned Catalan. One day, he meets a girl from Girona, a town not far from Barcelona. They begin dating and eventually decide to move there. Juan works online, so he's got a lot of spare time to dedicate to Catalan. He hits the books for four hours every single day. He knows how to learn. And on top of that, given his background with Romance languages and his confidence as an experienced language learner, he starts using language with his girlfriend, with his friends, with her friends, and in shops and whatnot. How long do you think it's going to take one to learn to be conversational or even reasonably fluent in Catalan? I suspect three months would be more than enough for Juan to get a very solid grasp of Catalan and start using the language in most circumstances. And now meet John, an American in his 30s who has never learned a foreign language before, except for a meager attempt at Spanish in college. One day, he decides that he wants to learn Russian. He essentially has no previous language background, does not have a clue how to start by himself. Realistically, it might take John between 3 and 10 years to learn Russian fluently, depending on his future choices and whether or not he manages to stick with it. So, just to wrap up, it's quite challenging to define a precise amount of time it takes to become fluent in a language because there are a myriad objective and subjective factors involved in the process of language learning. I have identified three main categories of factors. The first one being the objective distance between your native language and your target language. The closer your native language to your target language, the less time it takes to learn, and the opposite is also true. Second, the background of each learner contracts or lengthens the distance to cover, and the more experienced the learner, the more likely it is for him to know what to do how to do it, and the confidence to make it happen sooner than later. And third, the way you live and decide to live can greatly accelerate your learning process. No matter where you live, you need to find ways to come into contact with a language, use it, and make it part of your life. Your efforts will pay off big time over the long run. What do you guys think? Do you speak another language fluently? How long is it taking you to learn one or more languages to a fluent level? Please drop a comment below and don't forget to check the links in the description box. I've got a great article waiting for you on my blog with a lot more information on this topic. As always, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.